So welcome to Big Buddha is watching initial reactions. So I'm I'm in the 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 missus is away tonight, so I'm in the big living room tonight. Got it all to myself. The big TV. Uh, so I thought I may as well watch the film I'm going to watch tonight on there. And uh, as I said in the last video, it is the Manchurian Candidate. The let's prove it to you. There it is ready to go. So it's the the two thousand and four. Uh, remake directed by Jonathan Demme this time starring Denzel Washington, Meryl Streep I'm guessing she's going to be in the Angela Lansbury role and John Voight I guess she'll be the um, the playing the political partner in the film this is all guesswork I know Liev Schreiber uh, from uh, X Men in uh, in this one as well. I'm guessing he's the Manchurian candidate. This is all guesswork. I I don't really know much about this film, <clears throat> other than that they've updated it from the original Korean War. <laughs> that was me saying the original Korean War. Uh, assuming there's going to be another one any day now. Uh, but they updated it from that to Desert Storm. So being 2004, that that'll be. Right, the first film being made in the sixty two, so set uh, being about a, a war that took place a decade earlier. So it seems right that um, it, this one will be about Gulf War veterans. But yeah, like I say, other than the fact that it's uh, directed by Jonathan Demme, one, so that's so I'm looking forward to it on that front um, because for a while he he was one of my favourite directors. Yeah, let's give it a go now. This is the 2004 remake of The Manchurian Candidate, and my thoughts on it are to follow. Heads. Neurons got, got, got exposed and circuits got rewired. I think you should leave. No. What are you doing? I gotta find out what's gonna happen, where it's gonna happen. He's delusional. Dude, watch where you going! You swore to me that this was fail safe. No leaks, no glitches. I will do whatever is necessary to protect my son. We're gonna stop this and take them out. You don't think they factored you in? Hello, Captain. Do you remember me? Oh, uh, well, that was The Manchurian Candidate, 2004. Uh, yeah, it's different. I Just um, bringing the story into the present day obviously makes it different. You don't have the, the Cold War element to it i think that's sadly missing but you know remembering this is 2004 that they made this film so although 9 11 isn't explicitly referred to you can't help but well if you make any sort of political thriller or if you did make any sort of political thriller or political movie from around that time you know, nine eleven and the geopolitical climate of the time can't help bleed into the film. So there's, uh, so it had that going for it. Um, George Axelrod and Richard Condon both get uh, name checked in the credits of this film. But really, I mean, I don't know how closely the original film sticks to the book. I imagine George Axelrod uh, had a hand at least in the dialogue, but I don't. I, I'd say that this was a remake uh, in story only. You know, the uh, the screenplay is largely a. Uh, it, it takes the essential structure of the the first film, but even then, plays with it a little. That a lot of the the characters are. Are very differently defined than the original. Denzel Washington, who plays the Frank Sinatra role, is in the first film. Frank Sinatra was just the the straight up protagonist, the straight up hero, the 
the audience's point of view. Here, the the Marco character is portrayed much more as uh, a paranoid, delusional. Um, it's unfortunate, really, that I, I I watched the first film last night, so I was very familiar with the story. Obviously, going into this, because I think that this would be an interesting one to go into, having not been familiar with the story, as indeed the the first film is. I think you could watch either versions and glean something from not knowing where the story's going, because uh, it does play up the fact that, um, you know, in this film as well, uh, you know, Dental Washington is sort of the point of view character, but you don't know how skewed his point of view is. Uh, how warped he was from his experiences in the Gulf War and um, it, of course this being a, a post Fight Club Sixth Sense film you, you could almost half be expecting some sort of twist on on the psychological front uh, and that in that respect it could almost all be taking place in his head um, so yeah, I mean, it does. It, it retains the essential story structure, but it does change up some things, especially towards the end, with uh, with regards to the story. So that if people who are familiar with the first film, at least, or the book, uh, are kept on their toes. So, um, the way the story plays out, especially at the end of the film, is uh, is slightly different to the original. Um, the one thing they did slightly better is the um, my, one of my grievances with the original is the Janet Lee character who, who really is only there as the girl really she's she's a really really ill-defined character in the first film in in this version they actually she the, the that character plays into the story much much more so uh, that that does um that does help in in a lot of respects uh Jonathan Demi's direction is it's i mean this is definitely Jonathan Demi's film yeah he, he has his signature looking straight down the the eye of the camera all the way through it you know it's it's not just reserved for uh, for key points in the film, but well, he does use it to emphasise the drama, but it's not used sparingly. It's all over the place. I think I think it it might have been more better suited that technique, that gimmick, if he just reserved it for a few key moments in the drama to really emphasise the point. It it all. It, it made me realise how much actually style wise M Night Shyamalan took from Jonathan Demi because he does the uh, the the full profile shot a lot in his films and so this film it remind me it reminded me a lot of a Shyamalan film in a f funny sort of way stylistically it's almost like it, it almost feels like a horror movie in places especially with all the flashbacks and and everything that you get. Um, is it as good as the original? No, no, it's not as it isn't. Uh, Denzel Washington's always compelling on films. Um, on film, I think it's fair to say the guy's never really given a bad performance. It's just unfortunate that he he does seem to pick quite dull thrillers. I mean, the, if this didn't have the name recognition for me, I don't think this is a film I'd ever actively seek out to watch. You know, despite the the director behind it, I think that that would be if the if this film would have had any draw for me, it would have been Jonathan Demi, the the director. Other than that, this isn't really the sort of film I naturally gravitate towards. So I'm I'm not a a bog standard thriller guy. Um, but I, but on on the other hand, you know, I've seen a lot worse. I've seen a lot duller, um, but I have seen better. <laughs> so it, it it it's it's a fairly middle ground movie for me. Um, so there you go, folks. That's um, that's uh, just a few initial thoughts on my my first viewing of the Manchurian Candidate remake. Uh, might do some more of these. I don't know. I'll probably 
back in my <laughs> back in my man cave for the for the rest of them. Uh, but thanks for joining me, folks. Um, and until next time, this is me, Big Buddha, signing off. And I shall see everyone out there in YouTube land. <laughs>